Hello you lot, welcome back to The Loft with me, JB, Jubsy, JB, whatever you want to call me, I don't really care, I've been called all sorts of names in 53 years. Uh, welcome to with me, Dennis and uh, Krabby, uh, this is November, as I said, 2024, and we're going to have a bit of an update, we've got some reviews to do, um, um, I've had to sell some stock to get some new bits and pieces, so we're going to be reviewing... Sorry about that. There's fireworks going off. This microphone is not supposed to really pick them up, but I bet you now heard that big, huge bang just over the house. Uh, we're going to be reviewing the, one of the new Acura Scale New Batch Class 37s. I've had to sell a kidney to get this. Uh, and we're going to be reviewing a wagon. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, I want to talk about... Um, if you follow the Facebook page, and uh, um, you would have seen there's been a bit of controversy about uh, this model i've been doing here so there you have it i've turned the microphone off because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't i've now done four takes and every time i do a take the microphone isn't working so hopefully you can still hear me okay so that was a picture of the completed model 56301 now i converted that from a Hornby fast line 56302. Now over three weeks I've worked tirelessly on doing this project. I called it 301. So basically the story is I bought a 302 when I was building the layout and I wasn't sure what era I wanted to model. I thought kind of mid early to mid 2000s and then I changed it to almost present day so I did buy quite a few locomotives that were around this era now I still had this loco because I, I, I really do like the livery on it so I decided rather than sell it on I'll keep it and I'll change it into 56301 I knew that there were subtle differences in the two locomotives 301 and 302 are a, a different locos one was built in crew one was built in doncaster so they are slightly different i was hoping people weren't really going to notice that and just you know think well that's a great model well done jubsy that's you know whoa, i like that most people did so on saturday night when i posted it a few niggles came in from certain experts you know they're totally different this is wrong that's wrong and I, you know i thought okay that's fine you know i removed a few and then i woke up on sunday morning and there was two guys there's always two guys there were two guys who were moaning about the signals earlier you know a few months ago anyway these two guys basically were ripping the project apart even though I stated the fact that the locos were different, it was modeler's license, I was just trying to use a model I didn't want to get rid of, I like the livery. Even though I stated that that was modeler's license and the locos are different, they still tried to put it right by having a discussion. To me, one was, they are different. I've already stated that in the in in the thread. This is on Facebook, by the way. And then another guy said, "You've got it totally wrong. Why bother doing it? It's totally rubbish." Okay, but I've stated the fact that it's it's they're not they're not correct. Now, if you're an expert, then you will know the differences between the two locomotives, three hundred one and three hundred two. Okay, 302, its marker lights are, let's say they're outy, and on 301 the marker lights are inny, they're recessed. Also the main headlight on 301 and 302 are different, one is browned and one's got a square high density headlight. The biggest difference between the two is 301 has a cutaway piece around the, around the cabs. Now, I'm not going to start cutting my locos to pieces just to satisfy the... I'm not going to call them 
I'm not going to call them rivet counters anymore. The, the so-called experts who expect everything to be 100% accurate. I know the loco is not 100% accurate. I've already stated that. So I don't really need you to come on and say that's wrong when I've already said it's wrong. Okay. The differences between the two locomotives are almost... It's, it's just minute differences. So on Sunday I opened up a discussion on the Facebook page about why these people, these so-called experts, come on to my page and many other pages and of us, us modelers who are just trying to help others, which I do. I do the step-by-step -step guides, I help people... <laughs> I help people do the weathering. I'm here to help people. And there is other modelers out there who are doing exactly the same thing. Trying to help. Trying to inspire. Yet we have this little band of people. Now, I don't know whether they want attention. Because they're not going to get it from me. I don't know why they feel the need to attack the Facebook page they probably will attack this channel as well now I'm talking about it I've done a video before about rivet counters I'm not going to call them that anymore the so-called experts who just want to get attention now and another person has said you don't know your class 56s I do know my class 56s because I used to work with class 56s all right I'm not striving for 100% accuracy if I state the fact it's not 100% accurate, then I know it's not accurate. Now, how, how are we going to move forward with this hobby and inject new blood into the hobby when these people are waiting behind their mobile phones, their computers, for someone to post something and then they think, oh, that's wrong, I must, I must comment. When a post, <laughs> on Harold Road gets 1,100 1, likes and over like 200 comments saying how great it is thank you why would you two but well, they're blocked now and they're banned and blocked I just I can't be, I don't I don't understand why would you go on there and make a comment saying something's wrong when I've already said it's not right I don't know I don't think we're ever going to move forward with any hobby that's not just model railways it's whatever there's always going to be someone out there who, who's there just to upset another person i don't get it i really I, I i just i just don't get it um i know i put a post on facebook and you all chipped in loads of you made loads of fantastic comments back in the project i wasn't i wasn't having a moan i'm just trying to work out why people feel the need to, to do what they do and that is obviously um, ridicule someone's work now I don't know whether it's jealousy I'm, not, I'm, ne I'm never going to blow my own trumpet and say that I'm a fantastic modeler I think you lot out there think I am I'm, I'm, I would just say I'm a, I'm a standard modeler I'm good with what I do I, 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 I will admit I've got an artistic flair um, I'm good with an airbrush and I've got a good eye for detail, but I wouldn't say I'm a professional modeler There are loads out there who are a lot better than me. I've just self-taught myself over 25 26 years to, to do what I do and I'm more than happy to help others So most of you out there love what I do But this little piece of the camera, I'm just trying to work out um, I, I want to know what goes on in someone's mind I mean, I see things on the internet, I see things um, that I don't agree with, or I don't like, but I scroll by. I, I would never, ever go on someone's page or their group or whatever and put a, a derogatory comment about their work. I just think it's, why, why upset someone? Not that I'm upset. I'm not upset, I'm just trying to work it out. Why? Well, anyway, shall we, shall we move on now? Because we're going to do, we've got to be doofus, we're going to do a wagon review and we're going to do a loco review um, and then that'll be it for November. Um, after November, 
<laughs> second set becomes December. After November, it will be uh, obviously winter. So there won't be much going on in Harold Road in winter because I, 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 I don't come up here in the winter very often because it's, I will. But I'll let you know when, you know, if you, all of you die hard fans out there are going to wonder where I am in like December, January and February. Uh, there won't be much going on up here. I can assure you that. Um, so make the most of this, this, this one, this video. Not that it's had a good start because I've had a bit of a rant about so-called experts out there. So let, let's, um, let's, let's do this wagon review and then we'll take a look at the new batch of the Acura Scale Class 37. Now I don't normally do wagon reviews. I normally do locomotive reviews. Now that's why all the main manufacturers are queuing up to get me to review their new stock because they just love the fact i do a professional review as you know out there very professional that's why i've got loads and loads of boxes to review from all the major manufacturers <laughs> yeah right anyway the reason why i'm doing a review of this model and dennis is very interested in this as well is the fact that this is the mxa i'll, I'll tell you what it is it's a, uh, what is it? It's a 37830A MXA Lobster Bogey Open Wagon DB Cargo. Thank you. Uh, so that's what that is. The reason why it's having a review from me is the wagon itself retails at a whopping £57. It's £57 for a piece of plastic. That's what that is. But the reason why... I've uh, sold a kidney to get these is the fact that I want three of these to work the ballast sidings over in the corner um, so I bought three I did have to, I had to I had to sell stuff to buy it by the way because you know I ain't got a great deal of money at the moment Christmas is coming the boys cars just broken down I've had to buy him a new exhaust box you know just, just the money doesn't hang around I know you lot think I'm loaded I'm not not loaded, am I, Dennis? No. There you go. See, Dennis knows. Hang on, where's... Oh, I've got to get my man. I like him being there. So, um... <laughs> so, 57 quid for a wagon. Now, I know people are going to go, well, yes, the ballast wagons as well are cost best part of 80-odd quid, JB. I know, but can how can we justify... A piece of plastic to be 57 quid now I've, I've purchased three of these and that's cost me 150 pounds for three plastic wagons <clears throat> I know you're gonna comment below I just know it well, anyway we're gonna I haven't taken it out of the box yet so we're gonna do that and see exactly why this thing cost us 57 quid now before I do that Backman have brought out two of these with two running numbers. I wish I'd do a bit a bit more than two, because I've had to buy a third one. I'm going to have to renumber it. Um, so you've got... Which one is this one? 37830 MXA Lobster Bogey Open Wagon DB Cargo. Thank you. So you've got two. You've got... You've got, <laughs> you've got a 37830 and a 37830A. And both of them have different running numbers. Now... That one is, uh, it's got a really, it's got a really small number. That's 950212. And the other one, this number slightly bigger so I can read that one, is 965066. I bet my head got in the way then, didn't it? Did it? Did my head get in the way? I don't know if I did or not. If it did, that'd be great. Great view in that will. So let's, let's, let's take one out. And <laughs> let's, let's get one out. Oh, let's get one out and let's have a look at it, shall we? That sounds so wrong, doesn't it? God, I keep knocking the camera as well. <laughs> oh, God. Right. Um, so, obviously, you've got to pull the flap open. <coughs> right, we'll do that. So, I don't know whether to pull both flaps open, but no, we'll do one. Okay, we'll just we'll just do that. Okay. Right, so we slide it out. Oh, look at that. I'm going to gently put the box on the floor. And there you have it. It's in an ice box as normal. Now, I just need to change my glasses here because the, um, 
I need some glasses I can actually see. There you go. I've got to put another set of bins on. There you go. So I'll just remove it from its uh, ice box, and uh, we'll, we will um, have a look at it. It's the first time, <laughs> first time that I've had a look at this. So we're greeted firstly by whatever this is. Uh, if someone can, um, if someone can explain to me what, why there's a piece of plastic in there that doesn't even go the full length. <sighs> What's that for? I mean, is that why I've paid 50 quid for this? Because if I just sling a little bit of plastic in there. Um, why? What does that do? Can someone explain what that does? We don't need it, do we? So let's have a look at this one. This, as I say, you can see that close up. Now, it's it's an old, as I said, it, it, the chassis is a 50-year-old BDA wagon. You can clearly see it's an old wagon. I mean, them old bogeys there, look. Um and basically what, what Axiom Rail did was stick a new box on it. It's clever, isn't it? But the wagon itself is totally plastic. <sighs> even, even the underframes, it's, it's not exactly, it's not, it's not blowing my skirt up, to be fair with you. Uh, it's all plastic, although it looks, it looks metal. Um, it's not metal. Everything here, the only metal thing on here is the, is the wheels. Everything else is plastic. Yes, the decoration is quite good, but it hasn't got sprung buffers. Now, I would have thought that a model that costs 50-odd quid would have sprung buffers. Um, I fail to see why this is £57 retail. If it was a metal chassis, I'd be like, yeah, that's fair enough. It, it's just a plastic wagon. I'm not... 150 quid for three of these the only thing i like about it, it it's a good looking wagon it is a good looking wagon now i'll get these three wagons on the track and <laughs> and we'll just see what they look like in motion yeah should we do that because i fail it's flimsy it's very i mean look you can probably see that look It's not. You, all your, if these are brake cylinders, whatever, plastic. It's all plastic. And you, I think if you have got a, a train set, which Harold Road's track isn't far off that, we're going to have trouble getting that round corners. There isn't much. There, there isn't much give in these bogies. I tell you that now. So what we're going to do? Uh, what we're going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to get three of these out onto the track and see if they actually go around the layout. Because if I just I might have just wasted 150 quid at this rate. So let, I think we better just test that, that test that theory now. Right, you join us here in the normal position, and we're going to see if um, the points are set, as you can see in the top left-hand corner, and we're going to see if these things go over my set track points. Because if I don't work, we're in trouble, son. Uh, so I'll just get the old uh, get the old train moving. Here we go. Courtesy of a. A Hatton's class 66. Let's see if these uh, MXAs will go round okay. That's a bit fast, John. That's a bit fast, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they seem to be all right. That's the main thing. So let's just have one last look at these uh, MXA wagons. I think they'll look all right once I've weathered them. Because they look a bit plasticky now. I mean, I've got some, I've got some reference photographs. Uh, they're a good-looking wagon. I'm not going to say that they're, they're, they're not good-looking. But that's 150 quid sitting there. We shall see once I've weathered them what we think. But they do go round um, set track points, which is the main thing, and I'm glad of that because <laughs> I should, should have tested that before we even did the review. So what do I think? I think eight out of ten for looks, but five out of ten for the price. You know, decorations really, really good, but it is pla everything's plastic apart from the wheels. As I say, good looking wagon. In my in my in my eyes, no. Um, shop around. That's all I'll say. Uh, the cheapest I could I could find was thirty seven quid, and though I had to trawl a few 
internet places to find that. But you know, they'll look they'll look good. I think they'll look good behind DB stock, not a 67, obviously. Um But yeah. I'm I would say I'm happy but not happy at the price. Uh shop around and uh if you want a if you want what are they called? MXA Boogie box wagon. Thank you. So let's move on to the last thing today, which is a review of a uh, Acura scale class 37. Right, so I'm quite excited and moist about this one. This is what I've been looking forward to. Uh, it's been sitting around for, for a week now. I haven't even taken out the box yet, to be fair with you, because uh, I've been so busy doing the Project 301 that I have not even had a chance to have a look at this. This is the new batch Acura scale class 37. This is the one I had to sell a kidney for. I'm, I'm saying a kidney. I could have sold something else to pay for it, but we're not going to go into that. So this is... Uh, what one is this one? Colas Rail. Class 37 locomotive. 37116. ACC 2614. Colas Rail era 1011. Thank you. So what we're going to do... Um, I can hardly uh, contain myself here uh, because I'm just looking forward to the foam section. Um, we're going to take it out of the box and we'll take this this bit off here because I I, I like to feel the the, the vacuum bit. So uh, uh, bear with me while I just take this bit off and then we'll we'll have a look together inside. Right, so I've removed that plastic piece there. Dennis is very excited. I don't know if you can see him. No, you can't. So I don't know where to, where to put him. He's extremely excited about this. He can't wait to have a look at this. Um, he's been fishing today, but he's had a bit of trouble casting his rod because of his arms are a bit um, small. He also has trouble riding a bike. And he's not very good at doing pull-ups at the gym either. Uh, so, Dennis, you can go back up there. We're not here to see you. Um, just go... It's going to warm my hands up. <laughs> here we go. So we're going to, first of all, feel that vacuum, uh, that vacuum section. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, right. Just feel that. Just feel that. I'm, I'm just lifting it and the box is sliding out lovely and slowly. Here we go. And, oh, oh. Oh, there's something about that. I do like that. So you're 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 met with um mm, yes, you are met with some um a, a catalogue. Um, well, I wouldn't say it's a catalogue. It's it's, it's, your, it's your instruction manual. I'm sure there is loads of goodies inside that. So we'll have a quick look. Da -da -dee, da -da -da. Everyone say eleven loves the reviews I do for the manufacturers. So you've got uh, you've got this this mm, this thing here. Please read these instructions before operating your model for the first time. Uh, we're not going to go through that because obviously, if you own one, you know how it works. Uh, there's operation maintenance warranty and fitting detail parts. <laughs> Once I get my grubby hands on it, the warranty will be invalid. And you've got a cutaway of all the spare bits and pieces that you know in case something goes wrong. Um, Okay, let's have a look here. We've got the... Oh, I remember these when I used to work on the railways. Uh, but that's not one of those. It's not one of those um, driver's manuals. It's it's quite good because it's got the operational history of the Class 37. You've got some... <clears throat> nice... Uh, whew, some pictures there. Oh, Class 37s. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think I'll put that to one side and uh, have some... Uh, time looking at that on my own and then you are you've got the uh, the Akira scale class 37's D DCC and then you've got this you must read the instructions on the reverse of this card before operating your model you must read the instructions on the reverse okay <laughs> there's something inside the packet in there All right so this is the bit I'm looking forward to mm. oh it's the uh, well, hang on, hang on. I just, I just need a second. Just need a second. Okay. Get on with it. I am. I am. I am. Right here we go. Uh, uh, oh. Right. I think. I think me. All right. I'll just hang on. Where's that thing gone? I'll just put them. Um, I'll just put them. Um, where's where's right? I'll just I'll just put that and that together, and uh, I'll have a look at those in my private time later on. Oh. So, oh, there she is, inside the box. The Han Solo ice box. So, let's, uh, it comes out nice and easy. There we go. So, what we'll do, 
Oh, I sounded quite macho then, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, what we'll do, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take it out of the ice box and have a look at it on the, the workbench. Right, so basically, oh, it's tight. Oh, wow, that is very tight in there. That's what she said. All right, so I'll just put that to one side. You obviously, a typical Akira scale, you get your bag of bits, and these are good. These det detailing parts are fantastic. These plows uh, are on the, on, are on the, I would say, what's the word? They're, they're on par with the ones from Rusty Rails. They're really good. Um, and all the pipes you get with these, they all fit really, really well. So let's let's get her out. <clears throat> remove that bit there. Remove that bit there. You've got a nice. It's well protected. I will say that about Kira Scale. Not only are they in a lovely box with a lovely smelly foam, but they they also are well protected. So I'm gonna carefully lift that out like that. There we go. And there you have it. It's a it's a weighty old beast. So what we'll do? I'll put this on the weathering turntable and give it a bit of a spin for you. Right, so here she is, 37116. First impressions are it's stunningly good looking. It's typical for Mercura scale. Um, the flush ends look great. Yeah, and obviously being a Cura scale, it's got sprung woofers. Um, detailing wise, you can't really fault a Cura scale for their class 37s. In fact, all their models that I've had so far, the uh, the 66s and the 37s, I'm yet to actually, um, I'm yet to have a 31. And the one I really wanted is out of stock. So the one that runs on the on the network at the moment, 126, 37, uh, 31, 126, I missed out on one when I had the chance. Uh, hopefully I will get my hands on one. But I'm, all I'm saying is everything from a Cura scale that I've seen so far is fantastic it really really is a stunning looking model you clearly see the under frame look at the detailing there everything is crisp everything is really good um the decals are really really smart as well good recessed panel lines for when it comes to weathering as well you got the checker plate there on the door uh, the roof detailing again, exemplary, fantastic. Love this. This is a stunning livery as well. Um, I'll see if I can spin this around without knocking something. There's a three quarter view for you. Yeah, very impressed. We'll do a running test in a moment just to see how it is, but very impressed so far. There you go. There's another a good look at the side of it. Um, yeah. The looks is fantastic. It's the same as every other Acura Scale Class 37. The roof panel comes off to get to your DCC interface, etc., and to do your light switches. Um, ease of access is really, really good. Um, under frame, as I said, is fantastic. All-wheel drive. So that's the that's the look of the model. You've seen a you've seen a spin. So I think that what we should do now is get it on the track and have a look and see how it runs and i'm sure it's going to run fine but let's let's do it anyway and see how she performs on a crawl and a run down the back straight so 37 116 is on the back straight at harold road layout opposite junction road stabling sidings now this is the main line the track is dirty i'm gonna say it now i haven't cleaned this track for a long while uh, i am expecting it to be a little bit stuttery the local that is not me um when it goes i placed it on the track it did take me 60 seconds or so to get it on the track because i'd lost my glasses and i did it uh, <laughs> partially blind so it took me a while to get all 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 wheels onto the track but i did manage it right so let's uh, let's see if, if, if this thing can crawl straight from the box i'm not expecting it to be fantastic but let's have a go a little bit of ampage yeah i mean it's crawling the track is dirty i can't fault that I'm hardly turning the dial. I'll be honest with you, I'm hardly turning it. And we'll go the other way. Here we go. I'm quite impressed with that, considering this this track. And if I now ran my fingers up that track, and you looked at the dirt on there, that there would probably be quite a bit of dirt on there. But yeah, there you go. Crawl test straight from the box. Not run in. Runs really, really well. 
runs really well. Uh, there you go. And then what we'll do now is we'll get it down the end of the track and we'll do a light test, see if the lights come on properly and make sure the lights are working. And uh, we'll see you in a moment while I just set the camera up, up the other way. Right, first of all, let's see what speed we need for the lights to work. Lights are flickering. They are on. That's a good 20 odd miles an hour simulated. 25 maybe for the lights to come on. Uh, it's not bad, but if you have got a yard or junction road stabling siding as I've got, you're not going to have any lights as the loco uh, runs into your depot if you are DC. If you're DCC, you'll have lights straight away. The lights are on though. You can, hopefully you can see the lights there. Yeah, it's good though, isn't it? Nice runner. Quite impressed with that. I'll just put it back in the middle there, yeah. and then we'll just compare it. Let's compare it with a Backman class, uh, Cool S37. Let's have a look. And now for your viewing pleasure, and mine, we have two Class 37s in view on the back straight at Harold Road. On the right we have weathered Class 37 37099, which is a Backman model, and the new kit on the block next to it is our new pristine 37116. Now I will say when I now put 099 next to it, it felt as light as a feather compared to the Acura scale. Um, which one do you prefer? Now to be fair, I think it's a bit of an unfair fight at the moment because 099 has been weathered and looks <laughs> doesn't look like a toy compared to 116. So I think what we should do here is just move uh, 099 out of the way. And we'll take a final look at 37116. We've got the light on it, and there you can see how it the contrast between the locomotive and the background. The uh, foliage. Uh, I have to say that uh, that word foliage because I get paid and um, by uh, one of the members of the group to say it every time I do a video. So for you, um, I can't mention your name for obvious reasons. There is the. Uh, Foliage. There you go. Um, yeah, let's, let's get back to the actual Acura scale locomotive. One last look at it before you know I put it away back into his box. There you go. I'll get that there. There you go. Lovely, lovely shot. Look at that. It's a very good looking model. Stunning from Acura scale. No complaints at all. The only thing I will say, if you're a DC model, again, your lights have to be on at 25 miles an hour. We need to rectify this. I've said it before. If you're a DC modeler, Hornby did it way back in 2001, 2002, with their class of 60s and 56s. There's no reason why the new manufacturers can't have working lights almost immediately. But are they just catering for DCC? I don't know. Us whole dinosaurs who still modelled DC. Um, love this model. I can't wait to detail this and get it weathered. I think I might bump it up the list a bit and get that done. So, yeah, there you go. That I'll, It's definitely a 9 out of 10 for me. Fantastic model. Fantastic detailing. Livery-wise, brilliant. Really, really impressed with that. Right, there you have it. That's the November video done for you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I I, I never take anything seriously. Um, <laughs> everything I do is light hearted. I, I I just I just can't I can't do things seriously. I have to be a child and throw in lots of childish humour. But that's just me. Um, it doesn't detract the fact that I did a review today of the Acura Scale Class Thirty Seven. Uh, in all honesty, it's a fantastic model. I know Acura Scale followed the page. Guys, everything you do so far, the 66s and the 37s are fantastic. Can't fault it. I know I make light heart of the, the packaging and the foam, etc. You know, don't take me seriously. Um, all you guys on Facebook, thank you very much for your support. Um, it's been fantastic over the last two years. Uh, we're at the point now where Harold Road is almost up. I know you can't say a model railway is completed, but we are getting there. Um, so I'm going to be starting to work on more road and stop um, soon. Um, 
There won't be many updates during the winter time because I don't come up here in the winter. I just don't. And Al, I know, Al, if you're watching, I know you want this Harold Road t-shirt, which is hanging uh, on the wall beside me. I will get it to you, mate. Don't worry. You need to keep reminding me about the t-shirt. Um, you're practically begging me for the t-shirt. And if you want to walk the streets of, of, the, of the UK with a Harold Road t-shirt, then yeah, you, you, you can, mate. You can. But we, we do want... Um, we want physical evidence of you wearing the t-shirt so I can post it to the 9,500 followers on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that, will be coming your, that will be coming your way. Um, as I said, I hope you enjoy my presenting style. It, it's totally different to, to normal. I know there is guys out there who have a laugh. Um, but I, I like to have a, a bit of a giggle with you all. And, and, I, and I hope you enjoy uh, the fact that Dennis is here and then um, Krabby is here as well. It's a bit like the like the broom cupboard from the 1980s on BBC. <laughs> now I've changed the angle. I, I feel I feel like a, a, a TV presenter. Um, so until the next update here at Harold Road, um, thanks to everybody again. Uh, I can't thank you enough for all your support. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, each and every comment I get from you, which is positive, I absolutely love it. I do try and reply to all of your comments. As I said, I'm not a faceless modeler. Um, I will always answer any messages and um, requests if you need me. Uh, I just will not answer any questions or threads about things that you think are wrong. If you do want to put something on here on the YouTube, I know it's going to get. I, I just won't reply to you. I'll just delete you. Um, until next time, um, from me in the loft here at Harold Road. You take care, and I'll see you again soon. Hope you've enjoyed everything. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.